This week's video features ridiculous chum fishing. Fish. I'll also share my not so top secret chum fishing rig that hooked up 40 to 50 chum this week. How long will coho season go? And will we get a coastal steelhead season? All these questions uh, we'll attempt to answer and more. Wow, that is a beautiful fish. What is this guy doing on the, this log? Trying to, trying to net a chum, what is he, nuts? They fight really hard. These are, these are fresher. These, you're fine, you're fine. <laughs> nice. Are you serious? Did he jump over? That's crazy. Maybe he'll jump back. No, maybe. Got him. Nice job, guys. Holy cow. All right, I gotta explain a little bit of what was going on here. So the, the first day I went out chum fishing, I went to kind of a popular spot, a uh, fairly popular Puget Town River, you might know it. And, you know, I got there nice and early, got my spot, and, you know, we, we were hooking chum, me and the people left to us, and and people to ride, we were hooking chum pretty consistently. But, you know, at some point, you know, I was, I was actually, what I was actually doing, I was, I was pre-scouting for taking some people I met on Instagram to keep, you know, keep in touch with throughout the, the salmon season and the salt water, and they hadn't been river fishing in a long time. I was like, okay. Uh, you know, they reached out and said they wanted, wanted to go chum fishing. And, you know, so I'm like, all right, let me make sure the spot is dialed in, but man, there were so many people there. And you know, day two being Veterans Day, uh, you know, it just it's like, man, this is gonna be kind of cramped for three of us in this spot. Let me check out another spot that uh, I've been to before. As I was hiking in, it was really challenging. Uh, to get to get through there, I mean the water was up a lot, and you had to cross some some sketchy stuff. But you know when I got there, I was like, oh my goodness, there's chum rolling everywhere, and there's like 70 yards of gravel bar fish. Uh, to fish with no one else here because no one no one wanted to cross uh, the stuff that I crossed, which is uh, you know uh, pretty pretty <clears throat> pretty typical for uh, one of my adventures. I think I found chum paradise, guys. This is amazing, holy cow. There's so many chum in this hole right in front of me. This is just absolutely epic chum fishing here. Uh, as the water has come down, first of all, the water came up, all the rain brought all these fish upstream and it's now dropping and it is go time, bobber down time. <clears throat> all right, let's cover what I'm doing here. I got this, I got this slip float. I like to use these clear plastic floats. And this is just a, this is just like a, an eighth ounce aero jig, uh, number 111. Just a little bit of a uh, raw shrimp. Uh, you know, you buy at the store, just raw frozen shrimp and, and uh, you tip just maybe like a fingernails width amount and let's see how it goes. There's not a lot of current here. So I'm just gonna kind of cast it out and, uh, and let it, and maybe I might just, I might just reel it a little bit on my own and see if there's a chum that wants to, wants to go. I haven't adjusted my bobber stop yet because I don't know how deep it is. So I'm gonna just, uh, oh my goodness. There's one just splashed right over there. All right, let me just, let me just give it a little bit of, a little bit of movement. Let's see. I need to lower my bobber stop. It might be pretty deep in here, you know? Let's see. Here caught a little bit of current. This is nice right here. Maybe there'll be some some biting fish in the current, you know. He's serious. He's just 
chomping on it. What kind of bite was that? You trying to swallow it? <laughs> That's funny. You know, one of the one of the underrated tips for uh, going some crazy places on the river is is is, is a waiting stick. You know, like that'll help you get some places that most people won't go. Uh, besides, you know, you know, actually having waiter, but waiter stick and waiting stick and uh, and a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, strategy yeah. for risk mitigation, <laughs> and uh, you'll find yourself in some really awesome. uh, amazing <laughs> river fishing places with, with no one else and just you and the fish. So. They <laughs> just come up and whack it. Oh my goodness, chum are fun. You gotta love chum. <laughs> man, oh man. Beautiful. <laughs> I wish you could shoot those things. You know, I, I took them out and you know, it's day two over there. It just, it, the spot delivered uh, beautifully. Uh, you know, they got a, a whole bunch of chum. There's a school of them right over there. Oh, you get, give it back. <laughs> and I got a whole bunch of chum. I went, Fish. Uh, I, I had a live stream on, on that I did on, on YouTube. Yeah, you know, you can go to oh, my nice channel and, one. and check that out. Uh, where, where I was live for like 45 minutes. And of course the first team 15 minutes were like, we're like dead, but dang, these are some chrome chum. Oh, got off. Whoo! You know, I had a streak there where I think I looked, I don't know, maybe ten fish in a row, uh, just all live on uh, on the stream there. So you got, you have to check that out. That was pretty cool. There we go. I bet right in this seam here, where the fast and slow water meet, is like. Could be deadly. I bet there's a bunch of chums sitting right here. <coughs> Fish! That's what I was saying. I'll control my dog. Gotta give, them, gotta give them exercise every day, you know? If you don't walk your dog, it's, they find something to destroy. All right, let's talk about the WDFW news changes, emergency rules changes. First of all, uh, we had a, a limit increased on the Chehalis Basin Rivers. This, this you, you kind of had to expect, right? I mean, I mean, the numbers have been insane. So they have the adult limit to two, one wild, uh, most of the Shayless Basin Rivers, you want to check the actual rule change to get all the details that are relevant here. Uh, additionally, the East Grays Harbor Fishery also, uh, I think, had similar kind of a mirror set of rules. And then uh, you know, Kennedy Creek opened for chum retention, which is uh, an awesome place to go target chum in November. All right, we got to talk about this uh, steelhead. Uh, situation on the coast. I, I put an article out there on pnwbestlife.com, fairly pessimistic talking about our steelhead season in 2022, 2023, thinking like, you know, we got all these hatchery fish returning, but we are probably not going to get a chance to fish on them. They had a town hall on Thursday, which uh, I, I missed, but uh, uh, Andy Wagman over at Northwest Sportsman Mag uh, covered it and, and provided some great details. Re you want to head over there, read that story, absolutely. Basically, what what it comes down to is is like we're still in the hole on steelhead returns, and, and, and particularly the wild returns on hump tulips and the Chehalis Basin rivers are not what we need them to be. Unfortunately, that's also where most of the hatchery fish are returning to that are that are close by and easily accessible. So uh, I I didn't see that there's a clear solution to it because the sport impact limit is so small, and you know the 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 article mentions 
you know, staffing issues with Creel report monitoring and all of these challenges. But I think there's one positive I took from it is that it's at least on the table this year versus last year it wasn't. So they're at least trying to figure out how we can have that uh, hatchery fishery, uh, hatchery targeted fishery uh, for, for steelhead in the wintertime, which would be which would be awesome. I mean, it's a fantastic fishery on those those systems. You still gonna have uh, you know the quinol. You still you know with tribal uh, from the tribal standpoint there. You're still gonna have uh, an opportunity on the on the quillute uh, for hatchery uh, uh, hatchery fish on the bogey early and then late season. You know you've got uh, pretty healthy returns on the sole duck for those wild winter steelhead. And, uh, you know, support the Forks guides out there. They do a great job. Some of my best times fishing for steelhead on the peninsula. Uh, you know, Mike Z going down the Soul Dock and like Class 3 Rapids catching steelhead. Just, just epic, epic adventure. I uh, hope that can continue and the opportunity to be available. All right, so let's, let's talk about some of the data that's going on here. So we, we've got, uh, you know, we've got dips in all of the uh, returns for for coho, right? We were tracking the the Chehalis River systems like the Sats up and and the Wainuchu. We were tracking the Cowlitz. Uh, we we're tracking North Sound up at the Skagit, and all the rivers are seeing dips in their returns for hatchery coho. Well, a big part of that is rivers are on the drop, right? We haven't had a drop of rain, and the rivers are on the drops, and that means fewer fish returning. And then the question people are going to have is, it, are the coho runs done? Well, you look at a few of these run timing charts here that are up on pnwbestlife.com, it shows typically there's still a late push of coho. We're, we're definitely past the peak and that high water event from uh, last week definitely was probably the peak, but uh, there should be opportunity in many of these systems through uh, hopefully Thanksgiving. So you get, a, get an opportunity to get out. There should be some coho coming in. Uh, you know, rivers are gonna be on the drop all week, right? We, we, don't, we don't really have any rain in the forecast to speak of, until next weekend. So uh, expect that you're gonna have a lot of stale fish and maybe target lower on the system rather than higher for those fresher, more bite willing fish. And there's not gonna be as many, but there should be opportunity. All right, let's, with that, let's just jump right to talking about all the big wreck opportunities coming up. So for sure, you, you've got to you gotta have chum on there. I mean, there's, there's still chum in Puget Sound rivers. There's still chum in uh, these different creeks like Kennedy, Minter, uh, really gets going mid-November. There's an opportunity to target chum in the salt water out in front of these creek mouths, which can be just absolutely epic. Bob Anchovy, hopefully I can, I can do that uh, one of these weeks in November and I'd love to share footage of that because that, that is just a blast, underrated uh, way to spend some time on the water in the, the late fall season here. Uh, we gotta talk about squidding. You know, I, I, I had to get the boat out and uh, run it a little bit. You know, I don't, I don't winterize the boat. I just try to run it probably once a month during winter season. And, uh, you know, we went over to Elliott Bay thinking maybe there'd be a daytime squidding uh, opportunity because the nighttime's been, uh, uh, you know, producing here and there. But, uh, you know, there's just not enough squid around for that daytime opportunity. You still, if, if you get a chance to go to the pier or get on a guided trip to Seattle Squid, you know, um, definitely check that out. Uh, but yeah, we, we, it ended up just being a nice time on the water for us. And, uh, you know, we'll probably wait a little bit later, maybe hit point defiance a little bit later in November for that, for that squid opportunity. And talking about mushrooms, you know, I, I was out earlier in the week and found some young chanterelles. Unfortunately, the places where I normally, normally been getting chanterelles, you know, I found one, maybe two and, and no more. So it's either early or something's different with these spots. And so, you know, this should be peak for chanterelles like this week, next week. Uh, around Mount Rainier, elevations above 1700. I mean, it should be absolute game on for chanterelles. Uh, you know, th there's probably some snow on the ground when you go above 2000. You know, I saw that, but you know, just below that snow line, I was getting into chanterelles earlier in the week and I'm looking forward to coming back and uh, checking out these spots again next week and hopefully get some more hidden gold here. You know, something to keep an eye on. You know, you, you just, you just wanna watch the wind forecast. You're gonna be out in the woods. The woods is a violent place during a windstorm. Trees come down like this one over the trail here. Uh, you know, we had all that rain and then followed up by a bunch of wind. And there were, I probably counted eight to 10 down trees, big down trees uh, in just the short area that I was, I was working through. And you know, that gets right into the hunting topic. You know, next week you're gonna have the late 
uh, buck modern firearm season start and uh, I got I got a blind out there in the woods and I got a trail cam and and uh, you know I, I, I've got this uh, a few different bucks are showing up during the daytime this is right right in the rut period and you know the nice thing about that late season is it sh you should still have bucks showing up in the daytime uh, chasing does and so there's an op there's an opportunity a lot of bucks get shot in that late season so you know give, give it a whirl give it a try if you've got that tag or a multi-season tag uh, you know I'm also I got the multi-season tag and I'm I'm if I don't tag out there uh, you know I'll, I'll shoot a doe I'm not I'm not I don't have a problem with that I you know you can't eat antlers and I'm a meat hunter ultimately that's what harvest recreation that's what we're all about and I have no problem taking a doe uh, in that late muzzle loader season in, in the units that allow it uh, I'm gonna be hunting there and uh, you know I'll take whatever if it's brown it's going down and don't forget to like this video subscribe to the channel turn your notifications on and we'll have a lot more content for you as this is just going to be a fun packed fall into the winter season so all right i think we covered all the topics so till next time uh you know take care be safe out there